Good morning. So this is the first in the series of lessons from chapter five, uh, looking at angles um, and their properties. So in this lesson, we're going to have a look at angle properties of triangles and parallelograms. Uh, we're going to start off by making sure we understand and use the angle notation correctly to identify the angles that we want to find. And we're going to have a look at being able to find interior and exterior angles of triangles and parallelograms to solve problems. OK, so just some prior knowledge then that you need to make sure you have before you start this lesson. So you should know the angle properties of the three different types of triangles, the scalene, isosceles and equilateral triangle. You should know the properties of angles in parallel lines. So our corresponding angles, alternate angles and co-interior angles. Uh, you should know the total interior angles of a triangle and quadrilateral. So angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360. And you should know the definition of an interior and exterior angle. So that's given there at the bottom of the screen. So just take a little look through those. Make sure you're happy with those. If there are any there that you're not great on at the moment, you might want to stop this video and have a look at one on those particular topics. OK, so getting started with today, then uh, we're going to check that we understand the notation and reasons for different angles. So we're often given different types of notation with our diagrams, and sometimes that can be a little bit confusing. So what we've got over here, then we've got a triangle here with an extended line. OK, so we've got an exterior angle and an interior angle, and we're given two other interior angles on this triangle. Uh, we're asked to write down the value of this little symbol means angle B, A, C. So that means we're following the line from B to A to C. Those two lines produce an angle in the centre and the size of that angle then is 72. Uh, another different way of showing that notation. So this time we're asked to find the value of A, B, C. And we'll notice that the B has this little V over the top of it, a little top hat there. So that's another way of saying find the angle. So again, we're following the order of the three letters. We're going from A to B to C. So we've got the line AB and the line BC. So we're trying to find this angle here, the angle between those two lines. OK, that angle there then is 64. Now, how did we know that it was 64? So when it says give a reason for your answer, what it's expecting you to do is to write down the rule that you used to work that out. Now, hopefully we used the rule that in a triangle, the angles add up to 180 degrees. So angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. It's important that we get that sentence nice and clear. We get those key words in there. So angles, triangle and the 180 degrees. We're now asked then to find the value of the angle marked X. So a different way of describing an angle is that often they'll put lowercase letters in where the angle is they want you to find. So we're going to find angle X here. Angle X then 116 degrees and again give a reason. How did we know that that was 116 degrees? Well, we've got a straight line along the bottom here, which has been um, divided by this line here to give us two angles. And we should know that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So again, we're simply stating the rule we used to work out that value. So we've seen three different ways that we might describe an angle. We might use an angle symbol at the beginning of our three letters. We might use the top hat in the middle of our three letters, or we might have the angle marked with a lowercase letter. Now we've had a go at that, then we're going to have a go at trying to find an angle. So we've been asked here to find the angle marked X. Now it's easier if I do this um, by handwriting it to show you as we go. OK, so I've got the diagram here then and we're asked to find this angle here marked X. Now to be able to find angle X, we're probably going to need to find some other angles first. We need to take a really good look at the diagram and see what we've been given. 
we've been given two parallel lines. We can see they're parallel. They've been marked with the small arrows to show us that they're parallel. We've also got a triangle here. And our triangle has two small lines on two of its sides, indicating that it's an isosceles triangle. So again, we need to know those facts about our isosceles triangles. Now, there are several different ways you might go about finding angle X by finding some of the angles first. So the best way to start these problems is to just think about well, what rules do I know? Are there any angles I can find straight away? So looking at my parallel lines here, I've got this Z shape here. And when we see this Z shape, we hopefully think about alternate angles. So we've got our 38 degrees here. So this angle here is also going to be 38 degrees. So that's our angle A, E, D. And we're going to say that that's 38 degrees. If we're asked to give reasons, then we would need to say the rule we've used. We've used the rule that alternate angles are equal. Okay, that's our first one. Now, let's go back and look at the triangle. We've already said it's an isosceles triangle, as it has these two small marks showing us that those two sides are the same length. And we should know some properties about an isosceles triangle. We should know that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. So that's this angle here and this angle here at the bottom of those lines where we've got those marks. I like to call them the legs. So at the end of their legs, we have two angles that are equal. So to find the values of these two angles then, so we'll call these A, D, E and angle D, A, E. We need to do a calculation. So we know the angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. So 180 subtract 38. Now, if you want to, you might want to do this on your calculator. So please feel free to have a calculator nearby for these questions. So 180 minus 38, and we get the answer 142. Now that's the angle that's shared by these two here. So to be able to find one of the angles, we're going to need to divide that by two. OK, so that's going to give us 71 degrees. It's always a good idea to fill them in on the diagram. Once you know the angles, that helps you to see what you've got and what you still need to find. Now that we know this angle here is 71 degrees, then um, we can give our statement for that one. So the rule that we used there, base angles in an isosceles triangle are equal. So again, if you're asked to give reasons, simply noting the rule that you've used. So finally, to find our value of x, then we're going to call that x. Again, we need to do a calculation. So we've got a straight line here. Angles on a straight line add to 180. So 180 minus uh, 71 degrees leaves us with 109 degrees. Again, the rule we use there, angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. OK, so now that we've had a look at an example, there are four here for you to have a go at. So pause the video and see if you can find the angles marked with the letters. OK, let's have a look at the solutions then. Check your work, make sure you're happy. OK, so we're going to move on now to have a look at quadrilaterals. So quadrilaterals are named according to the different properties that they possess. And there are quite a lot of different quadrilaterals. So 
Um, the shapes are classified according to different things. So for instance, equal and or parallel sides. They might have equal angles. They might have right angles. Diagonals that bisect each other. Now that word bisect means to split equally into two. Diagonals that are at right angles. So diagonals that meet at 90 degrees. Lines of symmetry and rotational symmetry. So different ways we might classify those quadrilaterals. The one we're going to look at today is a parallelogram. So to be able to think about how a parallelogram works and its properties, uh, we need to have another think about our different types of angles. So you should have already reminded yourself before the beginning of the lesson about corresponding alternate and interior angles. So corresponding angles are equal. If we think of the diagram as two crosses, OK, we've got our parallel lines and our traversal line and they make four angles each. The size of the angles there are only two different sizes of angles. We've got this larger angle here or we've got a smaller angle here. Now, these two crosses are identical. So if we have angles in the same place on both those crosses, they must be the same. We call those corresponding. Alternate angles then. So we've already used some alternate angles. Alternate meaning the opposite. So these are on the opposite side of the traversal line. But again, the same size. And finally, our co-interior angles. So the co-interior angles, co meaning two, interior meaning on the inside. So we're inside the parallel lines and on the same side of the traversal line. Now, these ones aren't equal. You can see one of them is quite large, one of them is small. They add up to 180 degrees. Now, that's the rule we're going to use to help us to understand the properties of a parallelogram. So our parallelogram then, it has opposite sides that are equal. So remember, the lines show things that are equal. It has opposite sides that are parallel. So the arrows show the sides that match that are parallel. The opposite angles are equal. So the angle here and here are the same, and here and here are the same. The diagonals bisect each other. So although the diagonals are different in length, they meet halfway along each of those lengths. And it has a rotational symmetry of order two. If I were to put a pin in the center and spin the shape around, it would look the same in two positions as it is now and rotated 180 degrees. So those are all the different properties of a parallelogram. Again, it may be worth pausing the video and making a note of those properties if you're not familiar with them. So a little bit of proof then about the angles in our parallelogram. So here we've got our parallel lines, our traversal lines, we've got our co-interior angles. And we've already said that our co-interior angles A plus B equals 180 degrees. Well, what about if I create another traversal line that's parallel to the one I have already? So we extend those. There we are. So this line and this line are also parallel. Now, if they're parallel, then we have co-interior angles here. So this angle B plus whatever this angle is must also equal 180. And we've already said here that A plus B was 180. So we must end up with B plus A being 180. So this must be the same size as this one here. Again, we've got our co-interior angles here as well. So if we have A, A plus something is 180, and we know that A plus B is 180, so this one must be B. And therefore, the opposite angles in our parallelogram must be equal. We've got B and B and A and A. So effectively, we've created a parallelogram between these traversal lines. So that's why the opposite angles in our parallelogram are equal. OK, so let's have a look then at the properties of our parallelogram and how to find some angles on the parallelogram. Uh, so we've got our parallelogram here then. We can see it's a parallelogram. We're told these two sides are parallel and these two sides are parallel. We've been given some diagonals 
across the centre. So we're asked to find the angle TRQ. So again, we're following those three letters T to R to Q. So that's this angle here that we're trying to find. Now, we know we've got our parallel lines. So we know whenever we've got these parallel lines and traversal lines, we can either be using our corresponding alternate or co-interior angles to help us out with those. So if we want to find this angle here, then I'm looking for another one to go with it. So down here, our 59 is alternate to TRQ. So it must also be 59 degrees. Alternate angles are equal. The next angle we're asked to find then is angle PSQ. So again, let's check which angle that is. P to S to Q. So that's this angle in here. OK, so looking again then with our parallel lines, we've got 41 here. It makes this nice Z shape there. So alternate angles again. So 41 degrees alternate angles are equal. R, T, Q. So from R to T to Q. Now here we've got a triangle. So we know that the angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees. So 180 take away 59 and 41 leaves us with 80 degrees there. And finally, then we're asked for P, T, Q. So from P to T to Q. Now we know this one is 80. We've got a straight line here. Angles on a straight line add to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 80 means that that one must be, oh, sorry, 100 degrees in here. OK, so again, just pause the video, make sure you're happy with all of those and how we found those different angles using our parallel line rules, angles in a triangle and angles on a straight line. OK, so a few questions then for you to have a go at. So using those different rules that we've already talked about, see if you can find those missing angles. OK, let's have a look at the solutions for those then. Uh, so in green are the final solutions for the angles that you're asked to find. But in red, I've also put in any angles that you might have needed to find along the way to help you. All right, finally for today's lesson then, we've got a quadrilateral here um, and we've been given one of the angles as a value. The rest we've been given as algebraic expressions. So we're going to use our knowledge of angles and algebra to be able to solve this one. So again, pause the video, see if you can have a go at this one yourselves. All right, let's talk through the solution then. So if we start over here on the left, two parallel sides, so we know that these two angles must be co-interior, and we know that co-interior angles add to 180 degrees. So these values added together must add to 180 degrees. So if we add those together, 4x plus 10 plus 8x minus 10 must equal 180. We need to tidy up this side by collecting the like terms. So remember, like terms, things that are the same. So numbers and letters and numbers will go with each other. So 4x plus 8x is 12x plus 10 minus 10 is 0. So we end up with 12x equals 180. To be able to solve this then, um, for this method I'm using balancing, so balancing where we do the same thing to both sides. So I'm going to divide both sides by 12. So these little brackets with the blue writing in are just showing what I'm going to do to both sides. If I divide 12x by 12, I'm left with x. And if I divide 180 by 12, I get 15. So x is equal to 15. Now let's have a look at the other side then. So again, between our two parallel lines, we have our co-interior angles. So we know that these two, again, must add to 180. So we start off by writing an equation 
for those sides. So 8y minus 14 plus the 130 must equal 180. Let's tidy up this side. Again, let's group the like terms. The only like terms this time are minus 14 plus 130. So we get 8y plus 116 is 180. So to solve this then, we get rid of any addition and subtraction first. So to um, do balancing, we're going to take 116 from both sides. That leaves us with 8y equals 64. To find y, we need to divide both sides by 8, which means y equals 8. So the values of x and y are 15 and 8. Now, if you want to be 100% sure, we can substitute these back in so that we can find how much each of those different angles are. So we've got 70, 110, 50 and the 130 we already had. And to check that that works, we know angles in a quadrilateral must add to 360. So if we add those together, they equal 360 degrees. So our answers are correct.